What is up, everyone? We're kicking off the first step, uh, first day, first installment of Project Roddy, and it's going to be a simple one. We're just going to install a brake rotor. It's pretty easy. I'm sure you've all done it before, uh, but I want to be comprehensive with this series, and that means you're going to see how I install a brake rotor onto that hub from Stans. And in the pauses, I'd be thinking, what the hell do I say next? So we have our breaker rotor. It's this 180 millimeter SRAM centerline six bolt. We have the supplied T25 rotor bolts. We have our Unior 264 torque wrench. And we have a Unior 193 TX T25 T handle. You don't really need that, but I always find it a bit quicker to start the bolts with the T-handle, finish them with a torque wrench. Um, so with uh, with that all said, let's get started. Alright, so um, we have our hub, we have our rotor, and as you can see, uh, this is our SRAM centerline 180. Uh, all rotors, most rotors, have a r specific rotational direction. You can see that with that arrow right there, if we can get the glare out of the way. Uh, you want to make sure that you're putting the rotor on in the right direction. Typically that just means whatever markings are on it are going to be to the outside, but always check for uh, any sort of arrow that's etched. Or, in the case of a rotor design like this, uh, you can kind of picture the wheel in rotation, picture a caliper, uh, being my hand here, let's say, and as that caliper squeezes down on it, and the wheel's rotating this way, like so, um, that force is going to be best uh, withstood when the arms are kind of coming into the rotor. If we flip it over the other way, again, the wheel's traveling in this rotation, as the caliper pinches down on it, um, now it's it, it's in tension and not compression, and you always want those arms to be in compression under braking. So let's get these bolts started. Now, right now, I'm just getting the bolts to the point where they're making contact with the rotor, and then I'm backing them off because I want to bring them all to tension uh, via the torque wrench. And basically just getting them all to like a, a similar starting spot right now. I think I think it's a bit quicker to do this with the T-handle versus the ratcheting action of the torque wrench. So all six are in. You can see, <clears throat> excuse me, you can see the rotor is still loose. This torque wrench I preset to 6.2 newton meters. That is the recommended torque by SRAM. Um, we'll do a little detail shot of that uh, scale to show you how to set it and what it looks like. But for now, we're just going to torque them down since it's already set. Um, you want to do it in like an alternating, uh, alternating pairs, I guess you would call it. So basically, you don't want to kind of just work your way around like a clock. Um, pick a random bolt to start with. Torque that one. Then go to the one opposite from that, <clears throat> torque that one, and then go to the one the one, go to one of the ones. <laughs> Next to your original, do that, and then opposite that one, and so on. For example, I started with this one here. That's number one. Number two is the one opposite. Third, I did. The one to the right of number one. Fourth, I did the one opposite number three. Fifth was next to number four. And then sixth was opposite number five. So this is the scale of our torque wrench. It's not too dissimilar from scales of any other torque wrench out in the market. Um, has increasing numbers in newton meters on one side and numbers on this adjuster, this rotating adjuster down here in the bottom. If you remember the 
recommended torque for those rotor bolts that we just installed was 6.2 newton meters. So if we find 6 and we follow that line down, what we want to do is dial this adjuster in until the top edge of it just meets that line coming out of 6. <clears throat> Um, and that will fall on either 0 or 1 on the adjuster. And then we bump it up the point 0.2 that we're looking for. So let's do that. So there we go. There's the 1 on the adjuster. 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 1, 1.1, 1 1.2. And that's even with 6. And we're going to bump it up just a little to the point 0.2, that's 6.2 now. Ours has a lock on the bottom. This little guy down here, you unthread that to unlock the adjuster, you dial in your torque, and then you turn that back down to lock the torque setting in place. Others from other brands you'll pull on this knurled handle. Um, I personally think this is a little bit more secure. Um, can't accidentally uh, change the torque. So once it's set, you go in, you torque your bolts, torque, 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 torque. Um, and when you're done, you want to release the tension. The way this torque wrench works is there's a spring inside that we're basically preloading by turning that handle in. And if we leave that spring loaded, uh, metals have a bit of memory to them. And if we leave it under tension for quite a while, it'll throw the calibration of the wrench off. So the best thing to do once you're done using it is unlock it and just turn it down until it spins free. Now that spring inside is detensioned and it's good to be put away. And that's that. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for part two, installment two, whatever of Project Roddy, where we install a headset. Thanks.